Good evening, everyone. Uh, this special meeting will be conducted in person as well as telecommunication and is compliant with provisions of the Brown Act. Those members of the public wishing to participate virtually can access the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public may attend this meeting in person at Campbell City Hall. Welcome members of the public who are here right now. This is most we've ever had in <laughs> many months. So exciting to see you all. Uh, so welcome and I call this meeting into order at 7.32. Okay, I'll do a roll call. Commissioner Naylor? Here. Commissioner Malcolm? Here. Vice Chair Brocker? Here. Commissioner Dooley? Here. Commissioner Yoshikawa? Commissioner Kaufman? And Chairperson Fields? Here. Do we have any announcements? Looks like no announcements. Uh, could I have a motion after review of the regular and study session minutes from our March 10th session? I'll move we approve the regular meeting in, or do we have to do them separately, or can we do them together? So, okay, I'll move we approve the meeting minutes for our regular meeting on March 10th, 2020. Okay, I'll do a roll call. Commissioner Naylor? Aye. Commissioner Malcolm? Vice Chair Brocker? Aye. Commissioner Dooley? Aye. Commissioner Yoshikawa? Commissioner Kaufman? And Chairperson Fields? Aye. There he is. Uh, could I get a motion to approve the minutes of the study session from our March 10th meeting? I move to approve the study session minutes from our March 10th, 2022 meeting. Commissioner Naylor, Aye. Commissioner Malcolm, Aye. Vice Chair Brocker, Aye. Commissioner Dooley, Aye. Commissioner Yoshikawa, Aye. Commissioner Kaufman, and I was not present, so I... Chairperson Fields. Aye. Great. Uh, do we have any communications or oral requests? None. Uh, then we will move to reports from representatives. I understand we have a sub for our librarian reports, and I think I heard Steve Fitzgerald. Is yeah. that welcome? Thank you for coming. Thank you. I didn't think I'd be going. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for Can you push the button for your is he on? on the microphone? On the microphone. Okay, can everybody hear me? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Um, so uh, I believe in the uh, uh, the packet here, there are some slides uh, that Peggy put together also. Um, let me turn to that page. Sure. Okay. Uh, so first of all, I just want to make some announcements about uh, May. So it's obviously a very busy time. There are several um, uh, celebrations going on uh, during this month, including Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, we have lots of great programs and resources at the library. So we just wanted, wanted to remind everyone that, um, you know, they should stop in uh, their local library, Campbell Express Library, and make sure that they uh, find some resources that will uh, assist them in finding more research about those topics. Uh, additionally, we have summer reading uh, starting on June 1st. Um, please visit our website for more information. Uh, we can sign up for a Beanstack account to help you mark your progress through the program. And this year it's called Read Beyond the Beaten Path. And in partnership with that, we have South County Park Day Packs. So with the uh, summer reading program, Patrons can get free day use parking passes at the library and use them to visit our state parks. Uh, there is, I should mention, a long waiting list at this time. It's been very popular. Uh, we are in the process of getting some more passes and hopefully we'll have those real soon. Uh, but we also have some special uh, park related material in our Morgan Hill and Gilroy locations. So if you make your way down south, please be sure to ask staff about that. We have digital coaching classes going on in Milpitas and Gilroy. So this is an opportunity for um, senior and uh, other patrons to get some assistance with computer ease. 
Uh, we do have a variety of languages as well. So it's offered in Spanish and Mandarin. Uh, should patrons choose to uh, need assistance in those languages. Um, we have our Cupertino library expansion. Hopefully some of you have seen the progress that they've made on that. Uh, hint, hint, Campbell. Uh, we're very excited about some of the progress going on here as well. Uh, but Cupertino had an event, uh, I think it was two weeks ago. we very exciting. They have uh, a new program space there and we couldn't be prouder of how it looks. And hopefully when you uh, find your way in Cupertino, you'll make your way to the library and check that space out. Um, early May, the first week of May, uh, was National Small Business Week. So we had a series of programs for that, uh, including on May 13th, 17th, and 19th. So if you know anybody looking to smart, start a small business, this would be a great place to start. Uh, we also had some virtual town halls recently to aid in our strategic planning process. So hopefully uh, many Campbell members were able to take part in that process. Um, and that's all I have for the uh, county report. And doing part of my double duty here uh, as part of the local Campbell report. Of course, the big excitement is we have in-person programming starting once again. So we're very excited about that. We have weekly story times uh, happening every Wednesday at 1030. We have ESL Conversation Club, which are programs designed for those uh, wishing to improve their English. They can informally join these classes and just kind of practice speaking. So it's a great resource for them. That's every Monday at 130. I've already mentioned the summer reading program, which starts on June 1st. And then finally, we have weekday, Wednesday afternoon, school age story, uh, excuse me, summer reading program starting on June 8th. So those are some of our, uh, our larger events and hopefully uh, a lot of uh, Campbell children will make their way to those programs as well. Uh, the next page, we have some new resources that we wanted to call out. So I already mentioned some of the park passes for the California State Library. Um, that was the, uh, the state park passes that I mentioned. Uh, we also have a new resource called Code Combat. So this is a, a program designed for children ages seven and up to learn how to code. It's a great resource. They can go at their own pace. It's kind of got like a Minecraft feel to it. So it's uh, very age appropriate and a great way for kids to learn. A lot of fun. Um, next up. We have some statistics here. So. As you can see, we've had some pretty steady checkout and gate count, which is, of course, the number of visitors, as well as new library cards. So uh, this is at our Campbell Express Library location, which, thank you, City. It's a great space. We enjoy immensely working with, uh, with City staff on creating an environment for Campbell patrons. So thank you for uh, partnering with us on that. And with that, I think just knocked out two presentations in one. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to try to answer. Well, you had big shoes to fill, but yeah. you, did, you did all right. Uh, yeah, just all right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> High standards. Thank you. Uh, does anyone on the commission have any questions? Uh, really exciting to hear about the live programming coming back. That's yeah, awesome. It's great. We could yeah. be happier. Yeah. Yeah. Questions, comments? Great. Well, very thorough as always and, and great. So thank, thank you thanks. so much for your time. <laughs> thank I appreciate you very much. It. I appreciate it. And I'll stick around if you do have any questions. So thank you. Just turn this off. Thanks. So after our report on the library and representatives, uh, next up we have reports from staff. Uh, I will stall slightly for time as we adjust for our technical uh, difficulties, but if we're ready, Brian, uh, to get an update on uh, what's going on in the city of Campbell. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. Um, right now, it's prime budget season in the city, so everything that we're working on, uh, for the most part, relates to financial um stability and financial planning uh both with our budget uh but we're also going through uh labor negotiations right now with three out of um four labor groups uh that we have and um we are also fastly progressing on measure o which has a finance element to it which is our uh, police and library uh renovation project that the voters supported with 50 million dollars in bonds um, we have uh, progressed past the 65% design level and are fast approaching the 95% design level. 
Uh, and it is just what it sounds like. When I say 95%, that means we're 95% done with the design. Uh, and when we get to 100%, we will be looking at uh, bidding uh, those projects. Um, right now, the bid climate is, is interesting as we see um, both labor prices and material prices um, unstable uh, and increasing in, in uh, daily. Uh, but we also know that uh, interest rates uh, are continuing to rise as inflation looms. So uh, at, at parallel to all of that, we are planning next week to request the council authorize us um, to go ahead and issue the second series of those bonds. So out of the 50 million that was authorized by the voters, we sold the first series uh, a year and a half ago for 20 million. We're now positioned um, and uh, we're informed today of our AAA bond rating uh, that we'll be moving uh, to sell those second series, uh, hopefully early this summer uh, for the remaining 30 million. Um, the good news in all of that um, for the voters is that the interest rates that we saw with the first series of bonds and the interest rates we're even seeing now are still below what we projected when we did the estimates uh, for our voter pamphlets and our voter information materials. So um, all of that means um, not only are we on time, but um, we were truly will be charging the taxpayers less for that 50 million than was originally anticipated, at least at this stage in the game. Um, so that is a very uh, uh, positive progress in the in the face of uh, the pandemic and the financial recovery that we see ourselves in. Um, and so uh, that was the, the gist of my report tonight. I wanted to focus on finances because that's everything we're doing. I do know there's a finance item later on this agenda to make a request to the council. And I think that that item on the agenda is timely. If that moves forward, um, we'd be glad to share that with the council uh, in their budget discussions for next week. So um, it's perfect timing that you're discussing that this evening. So uh, the, uh, what is it, 65% or nine, I'm sorry, 95% we're at? Close 60? to 95 at this point. Okay, and so, but that's everything. That's the police station and the library. They're both on different uh, paces, uh, but they're both almost at 90. The library slightly ahead of the PD. The library is pretty much at 95. Oh, so they're pretty the close. PD's then. getting close. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, Either they're just good. one's right behind the other. Okay, okay. Brian, is there an estimated cost for the overall construction of both projects in connection with Measure O? Well, the the yes, the easy answer is uh, fifty million. And you give me fifty million, and I'm going to spend fifty million. Um, and guess what? It's going to buy fifty million dollars worth of, of a building. Um, but but it is much more complex than that because there is some other grant funds um, that we are receiving and city contributions to some of that as well. Um, really, the way that is allocated is about just in ballpark numbers about 25 million in construction costs for the PD, about 20 to 21 million in renovation costs for the library, leaving us about five plus million and allocated um, that um, we can use for either project. Um, we already do have some um, contingencies and um, site improvement uh, budgets as part of that as well. So um, that's kind of how we broke up the 50 million. Uh, but in addition to that, we received 3.9 million last fiscal year uh, through our collaboration with our state assembly member. Um, and we got a cut out in the state's budget in times of surplus um, and are receiving $3.9 million that we're using un really unencumbered without any strings attached um, for our uh, what's called FF&E, which is a furniture fixtures and equipment that Measure O can't fund. Um, and that's that's a requirement of the bond. So um, we've got up to four million dollars that we're getting from the state to fund um, what wasn't funded by Measure L. I was just curious. Really bringing the total to about fifty-four <laughs> million um, without city contribution. Got gotcha. you. Other questions on the city update? Great. Well, uh, we have many things in unfinished business involving some of the folks in the room today. So I will move us uh, to our continuation of the public hearing on our fiscal year 22 Neighborhood Association Assistance Grants. Uh, this is a continuation of a study session and a meeting that we had in March where we started talking about these. Um, Given, I mean, I probably question for city staff, given that we have the budget to approve all the requests that we have, and then we did discuss those earlier, um, is there, are there particular points we should try and hit on today? 
Yeah, well, but beyond that part, should we discuss any more? No. So, so let me maybe just give you a little lead in. That I, I think yeah. the reason it's before you tonight is is uh, one. Um, we kind of set this up as a two-step process. One is to consider the request. We have a study session, kind of talk about the issues. Mm -hmm. And this particular year, uh, it seems like the commission's um, um, recommendation is to fund all of the requests at the amount requested. We normally set this up it's, uh, as a public hearing um, to allow members of the neighborhood association or others to speak on the request. Mm -hmm. And I, I did want to highlight that we do have some members from some of the neighborhood associations I see uh, both online uh, and in the audience, uh, yeah, probably because this is important to them and they want to be here. Um, but my suggestion to the commission is you can certainly open up and take comments if you want to. Um, I, I think the proposal is to support the grant request, so I'll leave that to the public if they want to speak, but I did want to note that they're here, so when you say um, uh, it was important to them, um, their presence here reflects that, so I'll, I'll leave it to the commission how you want to handle public comments mm -hmm. with that. Uh, well, welcome to comment. Don't feel obligated in that we have, you know, discussed these, but if those who are present or online would like to say anything in support of their applications, we'd welcome that at this time. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well. There's a red button on the microphone. <laughs> All right. Uh, Barry Shillman, Downtown Campbell Neighborhood Association. And I'm happy you're doing this again this year. We do depend on the grant money for insurance and to cover some of our costs for food at the events, National Night Out and a few others, um, and our pie giveaway at Thanksgiving. So um, I'm glad you're back and doing it and glad to be back in person. And thank you. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now I want pie, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I probably shouldn't say anything since I guess we're okay, but I just wanted to introduce myself just quickly. My name is Mike Cray and I'm a 34 year uh, Campbell resident homeowner. And I'm re representing uh, the Moreland West Neighborhood Association, which is uh, kind of the big triangular area uh, bordered by Hamilton Avenue, Campbell Avenue and San Tomas Aquino, if you can, if you can picture that. and. Mm -hmm. If you know our boundaries, it gets kind of sketchy there. So we're about 50-50 San Jose and Campbell. And we also do go to San Jose and they have helped us out. And we are a relatively small organization, but we have uh, re it constituted ourselves in 2019 and we have been doing a lot of stuff and uh, really you know, appreciate all that Campbell helps us. And uh, I want to say, the only, I guess the only reason I'm up here, I guess I'll say this, I was at your last meeting via Zoom and we had technical problems, so we mm. couldn't speak. Right. And there were two representatives from two of the other uh, neighborhood associations that gave tremendously articulate presentations. I, you know, <laughs> thank God I wasn't here for that. <laughs> I was not on the <laughs> But I think like I think the downtown Campbell rep was also on the Zoom call yeah. and couldn't we couldn't speak. So yeah. you know, just to let you know that we're definitely interested and thank you and really thank you for your service. So definitely appreciate that. For, for sure. sure. Thank you so much for speaking. Thank you. Is it possible for the folks in the Zoom to speak? Yeah, as well? I, I do think that you at least have one member of the public. I think you have Miss Key Triver on the uh, yeah. on the Zoom call that wants to speak, and I think she's unmuted. Uh, yes, hi, thank you. I wasn't sure what the procedure was for that. <laughs> so I wanted to, uh, uh, I'm president of the San Tomas Area Community Coalition. I wanted to once again, thank you for this opportunity. It means quite a bit. And last year in particular, we had our block party for the first time since the uh, COVID shutdown. And it was just amazing. Um, uh, the neighborhood was so pleased. And we had such a wonderful time. So thank you very much. Without without these funds, it would be much more difficult. Do you want to see a presentation or anything, or, or you whatever you'd start? like to share is is great. That was already very nice, but thank you. <laughs> um, I'll show some pictures because it was really a, a fun time. So let's see. Uh, let me open up the file. Sorry, this is going to just take me one second. I wasn't sure what the um, process was here. 
So let me open up the the document. Yeah, I did send them screen to Diane as, to as well. Here. To give you yeah, I don't think uh, participants are able to share screens. It it sounds like we actually don't have it activated for participants to share screens. So oh, I, I sent it to Diane. If she wants to bring it up, she can. I, I don't know if she got if she has her email there. I'm afraid I maybe maybe you could email it to her and she could distribute it to us yeah, uh, via email great. so we can take a look yep. at those. Yeah, but I just wanted you to know that uh, the firemen came, the police came. The firemen were a little naughty because it had been so long since they'd had public contact. They went ahead and did a giant fire hose water spray. I know we have a drought, but I've got to tell you, it was amazing. <laughs> you know? We had a water slide and a jump house this last year. And um, every year we have a, a, a raffle that helps to pay for the event. Um, and so we had uh, neighbors who made things and donated things and um, uh, Aldo's restaurant always donates a gift card and, and such. So it just it was a wonderful event and uh, I wanted to thank you again for that. Great, well, thank you very much. And then uh, Chair uh, Davis, I, uh, uh, Davis Fields, I think we have Ann Souza also on the line. Ann, do you want to unmute and speak? Um, sure, thank you so much. I wish I could be there in person. Used to be on the commission. I miss everybody there. Um, I'm the president of the Campbell Village Neighborhood Association. And um, we're really excited with all the events that we're going to be doing. Um, uh, last year, we did have an, uh, a meeting where we were able to have the um, someone represent the police department come and talk to our neighborhood, which we really appreciated, and um, just rental space for that or for food for our neighborhood. Um, we are doing a, a cleanup this Sunday. We've sponsored a freeway cleanup our neighborhood, so I'm really excited. Um, I wasn't able to put that in the, the stuff to you, but that's something that we're doing on um, this Sunday. And we, um, we've just been really trying to get our neighbors a little bit more active and knowing what's going on and um, trying to get them together a lot more often and just doing stuff in our um, neighborhood. So having a website, um, being able to post the events on that, it's been really helpful. And um, we always really appreciate the grants that the, the commission is able to, to give us. Otherwise we wouldn't really be able to do a lot of the things we do. That's so nice of you to say. Thank you, Anne. Uh, would anyone else, either on the line or in the room, uh, like share any comment? I think that's everyone online. Great. Well, then I think I will move us to consider approving of the fiscal year 22 neighborhood association grants, which I think we have a little page we could look at that summarizes these. Exhibit A. Uh, given the great words we've heard in our study session and everything else, uh, do we have a motion to approve our fiscal year 22 uh, grant applications? I will move to approve the neighborhood assistance grant applications for the year 21-22. Second. Great. In the motion, can you note um, for $500 for each of the neighborhood associations that were listed? So that where it's clarified that each will be getting $500 and who it will go to? Yes. Okay. So the motion includes $500 grant uh, approval for Campbell Village, $500 for downtown Campbell neighborhood, Association, $500 for Heyman Park, $500 for Moreland West, and $500 for STACC. Thank you. Commissioner Naylor? Aye. Commissioner Malcolm? Aye. Vice Chair Brocker? Aye. Commissioner Dooley? Aye. Commissioner Yoshikawa? Commissioner Kaufman? Aye. Chairperson Fields? Aye. Thank you. Uh, the motion is approved. It's very exciting. Looking forward to hearing all the great stuff that comes from this uh, in the next year when we get to talk about this again. Thank you. Thank you for your time.
Have a good night. Uh, we will move on to the continuation of our fiscal year 22-23 budget requests. Uh, the first step I see, I think last time we asked about the history of the social service subgrant funding because there was a question about whether I think the 55,000 had changed or evolved over time. So I assume that one's here because we got some more data or information. Is that right? Uh, in your packet. Oh, I see it. The second to last page. Yeah. Memo, um, it's C by year. So, I'm sorry, turn my microphone on 50,000 in 2016 and went up to 60,000 in 2017 and 18, went back down to 55,000 in 2019, and it's been at that level since. So, got it. That was the question of, uh, you know, when, when was it cut? It actually was increased. Um, from 50 to 60 and then went back down to 55. Okay. Um, thank you for pulling this. This is very helpful. Um, I think maybe we can treat this separate from the uh, discussion on the, the specific ask for Explorer, given this is an existing budget amount. But I guess uh, this is a question for city staff. Um, given that I think in our time, we tend to get asked, in this case, unlike the neighborhood assistance grants, we've been asked for more than the 55,000. Um, would it be possible or what is the best way in which to inquire about some sort of like inflation-based and merit-based request to like get that up to like 75 probably would line up better, I think, with the requests that we've been getting and just cost of living going yeah. up is that is that something that well in the context I'll just give you the context of where we are financially as i talk about budget yeah. and everything budget these days um so what we presented to the council is still a deficit budget we're still looking at about 700 to eight hundred thousand dollars of deficit that's down from the 1.3 million that we were looking at even uh three weeks ago with the council um because staff has been working hard to reduce that so the, the input we've received from the council is uh, concern about any uh, permanent um, long-term costs being funded right now because those deficits are being funded either by our reserves or by federal um, uh, ARPA uh, funds. And so um, I'm mindful of that. Um, the, but the one thing that I do hear from the council is if there's special things that need funding, one-time things. They're more than happy to consider those right now until things stabilize. I think it's difficult to expect uh, an overall budget increase without, without you know, um, thought of future budgets. If there's a one-time request uh, um, and there's some special requests, I, I think that's going to be more successful right now. And that's what our staff is hearing from the council. Um, and so we're bringing to them projects, things, programs that they've uh, supported. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, you've talked about lots of projects, sure, sure, and sure. I think that's what that fifty-five thousand um, goes to support. So, um, you know, if there's some discussion of, of this is what you're going to get from some extra value, or this is what like you, you're going to stand a better chance with the council. Got it. Um, that's very helpful. Does anyone else have any questions or thoughts on that? I think, I mean, with that in mind, I think it's unfortunate knowing that we tend to get asked for more, but hearing that context, I don't know if that's the battle to pick in this particular meeting. I think if there's some special ideas, and I don't want to be uh, Debbie Downer here, um, because what we do find is there's areas that do touch our community that council is interested at, mm -hmm. um, perhaps looking at, um, uh, perhaps looking at accelerating capital projects that were important, pedestrian or, or bicycle improvements that were mm -hmm. important. Um, council has already authorized us to use ARPA funds for uh, community-wide uh, access to Wi-Fi at our community center. Um, throughout that whole campus, um, things like that that serve the community that are that they feel good about spending that money on. That's not an ongoing operation expense. So, so certainly that area they're open to that stuff, and I know that's exactly what you work on. But but I, I'd want to be really articulate what that is when we come to them with that request. Commissioner Coffin, you look like you're going to say something. My viewpoint is that given the budget deficits that we're still dealing with, that although reduced, seem significant. It doesn't seem as though it's prudent to ask for more money at this point. 
than the $55,000 budgeted amount. I, I, I think you read that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right. I, 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 I was even if we were breaking even. <laughs> well, but, but I do think there's support and, and I know um, uh, Chairperson Fields and I met with the mayor and we talked about special projects. I know there's support for projects. I know there's support for what this commission does. Um, it, it's that mm -hmm. concern for taking one time money that we may have a reserves and spending on something that, that may be an ongoing expense. Yeah, understood. Okay, so that covers the social service subgrant. Um, the other one we were going to do that we talked about in the March meeting um, is making, I think this lines up pretty nicely, making a one-off request to sort of accelerate our ability to start on the Explore Art projects. Um, and so in the March meeting, and it's in the meeting notes, we discussed making that ask because we started some private fundraising and I heard from Commissioner Yoshikawa just now that we've gotten something on the line of like $300 for this year's Capture Campbell, which again is great, but not close to the amount that we need. And as we've talked about, it's hard to get this going and I'd love to replace those. I mean, those are lovely photos. We can move them and keep them, but also add yeah. <laughs> a 2022 set of photos up there uh, from the, the kids that have already submitted uh, for the photo contest. So with that in mind, what we talked about last time was writing up a, sort of an ask to go to city council. Uh, I think it lines up very nicely with what we said here and the conversation I had with the mayor, which is this is not an ongoing expense. This is sort of a one-off prime the pump, help get us going. Then we can build buzz and talk about this. And this might be the way to build fundraising as we get some of these murals or park benches or anything else out. So I wrote that up based on our conversation last time. Um, I think at this time we should just look at that. It's on the very last page. If people have any comments, ideas, uh, feedback that we'd want to adjust that at all before it goes to council, uh, I'll open up uh, for any discussion on that. I think it looks great. It was a good idea. We may not want to specify the range potentially of 25 to 50,000. I don't know if that would cause some hesitancy, uh, but I don't feel strongly either way. I'm comfortable with keeping that in there. I, yeah, and I agree with, I, I think asking a little higher, uh, kind of <laughs> hopefully, even if they could, you know, shrink that number down, then we get something. So that's kind of, that's my attitude towards it, so. So if you were to change it, you would, like remove the suggestion or actually just call it 50 or how would you maybe well maybe shift the lower li limit up a little bit if we ask for a narrower range but at, at the upper end you know it's like oh, okay that's that's a lot but what if mm -hmm. you know if they offer less i mean i, I <laughs> I don't mean to sound so mercenary. No, no. Like no. I'm negotiating with the council, but you know, I'm yeah. just trying to apply some psychology to it. Sounds like either change it. The two ideas are remove it entirely and be pleasantly or unpleasantly surprised, or change it to something like 40 to 50. Do other commissioners have uh, takes one way or the other? Only because you may get five hundred dollars. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if we're being realistic, I don't think I would remove it. But um, it is a bit of a wide range. Mm -hmm. But even if we got twenty five, it'd be totally fine. <laughs> I tried to make the bottom yeah, still a very acceptable exactly. but get us going. If they say, "Okay, we'll give you ten because you asked for twenty five, would that actually do us any good, or would it just be you know a band aid? So maybe raising the bottom up a little wouldn't be such a bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, just because then if they go down to 20, well, then we're still winning. Right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> and they feel like they're winning because we asked for 40. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the art of war, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Brian, reading the pulse of the council, uh, what what would you suggest in terms I, of- I, I think the request is fair. I, I, I really don't have a read on how much support and what that dollar amount would be. I, I know the mayor support, we talked with, mm -hmm. with uh, Chair Fields and, and the mayor, um, this concept is a one-time thing. So I think there's a support for it. I, I, I really, you know, I, I, it's, it's one or the other. I, I don't know that's making a significant difference one way or the other between 25 and $30,000. I, I will say 
um, that, you know, that they, they, they probably will look at doing something less than the maximum amount. They'll look at, you know, what's the minimum amount that we can do to get it going if they do something, uh, just because that's kind of been their mindset on everything right mm -hmm. now. Um, so, it, you know, if, if, if your comment is less than 25 really doesn't help you, then maybe that request needs to be a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think that they just say, oh, 25 to 50, will give you a 50. <laughs> I, I just don't think that's probably in the cards. <laughs> um, so it seems like we gravitated towards something like saying 40 to 50. Does that sound good to folks? Any other, uh, anything else we'd like to change in there outside of that? Either that, I mean, I guess we could say something along the lines of a minimum of is required, um, but I don't know if you've determined what that number is or not. Um, it was a little bit of like, you know, depending on what we got, we could make do, but, you know, doing a decent sized mural has gotten to be a lot. I mean, that's yeah. you're in the tens already. So, um, I, I, I felt, Should somebody go along to present? is that a choice? Can someone can someone present this, or is this a well? You can always speak on any item on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, you'll get two minutes, like everyone else from the public, to present. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll take your letter and I'll present it. I'm sure you know mm -hmm. if there's questions, um, we'll uh, contact you. But uh, no, you're welcome to come and present okay. um, yeah. when we get to the sure. budget item. And we'll be talking about the slew of budget things. Oh, sure. Um, so you'll have to sit through that, but there will be opportunity for public comment to support. Okay. Um, well, in the interest of uh, driving us somewhere, why don't we, Diana, if we could just amend that to say 40 to 50, um, and do we need to approve this in some way? Like, what's the procedural thing? No, I, I think if that's a consensus of the group, we don't need formal action on that. Okay. Um, but if I just look at the group and everyone's nodding that they support the letter, then we're okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So we'll no consensus to support the letter in a minute. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we will move on to good of the game. I know Commissioner Bracker's got something, but <laughs> does anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to mention that uh, I was one of the judges in the uh, most recent uh, art contest that the library did, and um, uh, I don't know the results of the judging yet. So, but there was some. Uh, uh, I there was adult and uh, you know kid under eighteen um, uh, submissions, and I was thoroughly impressed. Um, you know, I I, I I I don't have a huge art background, but I've done my fair share of like graphic design and. And, and been influenced by some fairly decent artists. And um, uh, yeah, there's some real talent out there in the community. So uh, at all ages, actually. Um, so I think we're going to have, I think there's, uh, uh, it's going to be some interesting pieces that come out of it. Um, I actually made the comment that uh, with some of the pieces, even if they don't uh, win, you know, the overall contest, there were several pieces that I thought would be of interest possibly to us uh, for, for use in, in either different projects. In fact, there was one in particular that, that um, actually stuck out. Uh, it was a, a drawing, a hand done drawing uh, of, uh, of our, uh, colored pencil drawing of the theater with the reflection pond. And I was like, oh, wow, gosh, we're so desperate for new artwork for the theater. <laughs> Because we haven't had any in a new time. We've for a long time, we've used the same uh, photograph of the front of the theater for on everything forever. Um, and uh, so I was like, yes, please talk to the people and see about getting the rights to use that. <laughs> you know? um, but uh, anyway, but that I enjoyed doing that and I, I hope to do it in the future again. And, and uh, there was some there was some good stuff that came out of it. So thank you. Uh, I was going to mention that I was able to sit in on a presentation from some Cal Poly San Luis Obispo students that were involved in a public planning uh, course, I suppose, that had a phenomenal vision and plan for downtown Campbell that they call Campbell Corridor. 
and I'm happy to share their presentation. They had a PowerPoint. It lasted about an hour. Rob Eastwood attended as well, and, and I, I was thoroughly impressed with not just their vision, but their planning, and I think it was very exciting to see <laughs> students, but students particularly interested in downtown Campbell and what our city could be, um, stretching from uh, Westminster uh, all the way to the Prune Yard. So I'm happy to share that at the next meeting because I think it correlates with some of the projects that we're trying to do in the public art realm and otherwise sidewalk art, that type of thing. So there is a vision out there. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was part of the course is my understanding. Uh, the professor was spearheading the effort and they gave a presentation um, to uh, uh, the uh, public works uh, division of the city of Campbell. And I don't know uh, how it originated, but I was happy to hear that they were somebody was interested in developing downtown Campbell and had some great ideas, really great ideas that I think are in line with a lot of what we're trying to accomplish here. Any more good of the game? Great. I uh, will move us on to the subcommittee reports. Uh, up first, we have Campbell Cares, and uh, exciting to hear. I think we got a packet in here and everything. Uh, got a, yeah, it's got a copy of the, the draft. Um, so. Uh, uh, made some effort to try and get the subcommittee together. Um, <laughs> um, but and we're getting closer to actually having the full subcommittee meet and discuss it. Um, but one thought I had, uh, and I've got a question to post to, to Brian tonight, is um, you know we've got we've got the draft and we're we're starting to kind of you know uh, uh, edit it some and, and get input from from the commission. And thank you to everybody that's inputted. I appreciate that. Um, so, but the question I, I was going to pose to Brian is, is at what point should we um, uh, engage uh, the review of, of the city attorney, Bill Seligman, and see, you know, number one, um, you know, is, is even what we're proposing feasible, doable, permissible within the limitations of the city or the charter or whatever the case might be. Um, and if that's the case, if, assuming we can move we get the green light to move forward. Uh, does he want to weigh in on anything? Because um, it occurred to me, uh, you know, even though I'm I'm using as examples or trying to pattern it after similar groups in town. For so, for example, you know, Friends of the Heritage Theater or Friends of the Museum, um, it's not identical. It's not an apples to apples comparison. So I'm like, uh, before we get too far in, we should probably, you know get the input of the powers that be or i mean at the very least but so um that's so that's that's uh that's the question that I, I, i'm posing to to brian so um yeah i and i and i would be happy to i know you have a your basic write-up that you've done um talk about framework i'm mindful of trying to tie the city attorney up too much in the in the details until we kind of get to those details of course um i think part of my role will be to work with you and the subcommittee as we develop this to sort of distill out of that where i believe that we need to get some legal advice from the city attorney and use that wisely sure. uh, and i'm certainly committed to do that and we'll continue to do that but it, it wouldn't hurt to talk to him about the framework um and about the concerns i've raised or things in my head where i think those checkpoints are yeah. and and bounce that off him make sure that that at least that I have my radars uh, on and, and tuned correctly. Yeah. Um, and if he sees other uh, touch points or issues that we need to navigate, I'd be glad to, to ask him that early. So um, I, I do have your write up. Um, I'm not sure if you want to uh, amend that or change that at all. If not, then I'll, I will use that. But um, I'll, I'll leave that to you of, of 
where you are with the presentation tonight, if there's other direction from the commission on that. Yeah, the, the, other, the only changes would be additional input tonight that I, I would, I would, you know, incorporate that and then I could send you the, you know, version 1.2. Uh, but uh, I think just the basic framework is there in terms of, of our intention um, and, and or kind of uh, broad purpose. I, I think it's fine. I think I have yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah, and, and and thank you in advance for that, by the way, and thank you to Bill for for any of his time, value, extremely valuable time. So um, yeah, I, I can completely appreciate you know not wanting to fully engage his whole you know full attention on it just yet until it's really needed. So yeah, thank you. Any questions from the other commissioners? Cool. Sounds like. Uh, next step is that. Do you have anything else in parallel you want to do outside of getting that input, or is this sort of a dependency before? Uh, well, I, I, I mean, kind of the next thing. Well, back at the March meeting, what we discussed was kind of looking into then uh, converting the the draft into an implementation plan, um, and 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 as I started to kind of contemplate that, that's where I. I it occurred to me, it's like, oh, before we get too far in, it might be good just to run this by Brian and, and Bill. Um, so uh, to make sure we're not going down any roads that we should. Uh, so um, I'll, I'll have that discussion between now and your next meeting. So uh, on your next agenda with updates, we'll, I'll, we'll certainly coordinate uh, in advance of that. I would like to um, sort of just pose the question to determine if this is sort of solo mission of the Campbell Cares uh, subcommittee now, or is it going to be, because being on this subcommittee for a few years, unfortunately, right after I got on it, we went into COVID, but um, I did some research on what happened beforehand. And there were several projects, obviously, that could happen over the course of time. Um, this, the way I kind of see this is this sort of taking all of the attention of the subcommittee, but then possibly down the road, having other ancillary things mm -hmm. happen as well. But this sort of be the solo mission focus at, at this point, because this is a big undertaking, bigger than anything that's ever really been under the Campbell Care subcommittee. <laughs> um, this kind of could take on a life of its own and at some point could maybe even be its own total subcommittee, you know? Um, so I think, and there's obviously a lot of legal stuff in here that's going to have to be worked out as far as bylaws and different things, because it is a much bigger, it, you know, there's you're involving other people, possibly young people. Um, there's so much other, so many other things that have to be determined. Um, but I think the, the main focus should be, at least in thinking about it, is, is this what Campbell Cares wants to focus on, this Campbell Refresh product, product, um, project. Um, <laughs> being the sole focus, the mission of the Campbell Cares subcommittee, because it's going to take a lot of time to put this together. So I think it would have, I think it would have to be the sole focus, at least for now. Uh, but I don't want to just solely make that determination. I think that needs to be a group consensus here. But um, it does, like I said, it's bigger than anything that the subcommittee has done, as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it will take a lot more than Maybe even more than the three people that we have on right now. It sure. Take more than that. So, I have thoughts, but does want to make sure anyone else? Uh, I think my thought is I'm good with it being the solo mission for a while. I think that my main learning, having been on this, is like this stuff takes time and work and intentionality and um, and I think in general for us, like narrow the focus, get stuff going, and you can always do more later, but no, I'm, I'm good with that. I mean, that's, that's the way I see it. Kind of to be like, mm -hmm. Just want to make sure because it's not been the way that it's been in the subcommittee in the past. It's been a few ideas at a time. Yeah. Kind of thing, you know? I think one thing I learned when Commissioner Kaufman and I met with, um, uh, Carol Hoffman. Uh, one thing she was talking about the art outside the box project. And I was like, how the heck did you all like do all those? And, and she said, um, I'm facing the guy's name. I was in Europe for two weeks. Everything's a blur now. <laughs> but uh, do you remember? She said a lot of things, but the name of the guy that 
yeah, she was like, Alan, man, he was the guy. I was like, well, how did that work? I was like, oh, he was retired. Like he just made this his, <laughs> right? Like this guy just that made it his calling. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm not retired. I work <laughs> like well. Now we know who to delegate things to. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Actually, Alan was who like discussed the, the very initial stages of this. There you go. <laughs> yeah, he but was my first seven. There you go. Board, so. But to, to answer the initial question, like I think that's I think that's good. I think narrow focus and get stuff going is is great. And especially with COVID hopefully coming to an end, now is a good time to narrow that focus. And as we all know, uh, trying to get some of these programs off the ground, take time, mm -hmm. take a lot of effort, take a lot of sweat equity, mm -hmm. and uh, essentially just pound the pavement type efforts other than just talking about it, which those efforts have obviously been hampered. So something as big as that project is going to take um, at least three subcommittee members mm -hmm. very committed and focused on it. So I think that's probably the right approach. And is there a, because there will at some point we're gonna have to have bylaws and whatnot, um, I didn't see it specified in here. I'm sure we could pull something out, but there will probably have to be a mission statement as well, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. because I, when you I, do a bylaw, that, you that, the, the tagline on the front page right. is kind it's of the first to step build off that, of, right? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. just to kind of it, it, that's that's actually that's more than one sentence elevator pitch, right? Um, but yeah, I agree wholeheartedly that yes, a mission statement at some point, yeah, yeah, to kind of really tie it all together. Yes. Very good, just things to think about. Thank you. Both. Well, and I, and I would think that at some point after the mission statement is crafted that whether bylaws are needed or uh, any sort of guidelines or ordinances that need to be adhered to, that would be, I'm sure, a question for city council when, when you're ready, rather than write in bylaws that we don't need or <laughs> make sure that we're not reinventing the wheel there. Great, uh, thank you for the Campbell Cares report. Uh, next up, Capture Campbell, I don't know, you, you were able to meet while we were out. Um, would you like to give a report? Yeah, I'm happy to share. Um, Mary and I, Aunt Marianne and I met on the phone and just chatted. Um, she did ch say we have two confirmed judges that are returning. Um, like David said, we have about $300 in donors. So that's something we still need to work on. I, we've, I've been sending out a, a letter Davis uh, created, but you don't get a lot of feedback back on it. So um need to keep pounding the payment with that. And then um, we sent it out to school districts. And then Diana gave me her contacts for Campbell Unify. But I, I'm a parent in that district. And I still haven't seen it pushed out. So I don't know if you have any other suggestions. They said they would. Like how to get the word spread with the youth. Like if you have any ideas with that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we 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 have uh, an education subcommittee we meet, but only every two months with them. Okay. Um, and we could certainly include that in our update and outreach next time okay. we meet with them. And I'm not sure what that timing is if that's good, but certainly like six or it's eight better than never. And, yeah, um, yeah. So um, it's just they say they'll send it out, and I just I haven't seen it. My I, yeah, one school district did send it out. I saw that, but. Uh, because that's where what we district are it. you in? I'm in Moreland. Okay. But we right. don't have a huge Campbell. We're yeah. kind of Campbell, yeah. San Jose, Saratoga. So, so we sent it out. But uh, Campbell, and then I sent it to like um, the photography teachers at our local high schools to see if mm. they would advertise it. But did we do the city social media? We did not. Is that? Can we do that? Who do I send that to? Oh, okay. I can send you the information. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the Facebook page gives a fair amount of attention. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering what if, what if you contacted like the, any of the, the PTAs and had them push it out? Would they would they be willing to do an email blast? So like I know in the specific district I'm in, in the home and school club, like they can push it out, but it has to go through the district office before it gets pushed out um, through to everyone. 
like in the parent communication. So, yeah, we'll keep trying. Yeah. Can we share? Is there a, can we do that through you? Is there an email or? Okay. Okay. They're just wrapping up the event. Right. Okay. Because I think we had a handful of submissions, but obviously yeah. we want yeah. more than that. Okay. Great. And I think we're going to try and meet in the next week or so as a subcommittee, yeah, too. So great. Okay. And last but not least, the Explore Art Project. Um, we already discussed that a fair bit up above. I don't have any specific i guess my my only question on that is when is that hearing um or did budget discussion that we were just referencing like when is that tuesday okay great um but otherwise i think go to that and otherwise we had a really good list of topic ideas last time of uh, potential projects so i think the next step is to see whether we're able to fund these and sort of change the pace at which we might attack some of these projects um so does anyone have any questions or yeah i just i don't know if you got mentioned at all but when uh brian you had talked about uh march yeah, i guess march um that the parklet you know program was going to continue um uh so i i just cur i made the comment that i thought we need if we could maybe work on artwork to go on some of those barriers does the the, the, the Council find out about? Or do they know about that? And are they interested? Or we're hired uh, an architect uh, to do some design options for us at least. Oh, okay. Oh, so artwork may or may not be an option. Depends on the design of the. Got it. Okay, so that's way pre premature. Okay. <laughs> more permanent. Great. Well, I think we have our next steps on all of the subcommittees. Uh, and that is the conclusion of all of our other business for the night. So at 8.30 p.m., I officially adjourn this meeting of Campbell Civic Improvement Commission. <laughs>